Elon Musk envisions Starship as the vessel that will transport living, breathing humans on a six-month journey from Earth to a thriving colony on Mars. While this visionary concept fills us with excitement, it also leads us to contemplate the intriguing facets of life within the Starship, a metallic cocoon hurtling through the vast expanse of interplanetary space. What awaits us in terms of living conditions inside this remarkable spacecraft? Join us in today's video to explore it all. When contemplating the interior of the Starship, one can't help but wonder about its potential comfort, luxury, or ruggedness. Remember the Starship Enterprise from Star Trek, with its extravagant living spaces for crew members during extended galactic journeys? Will the Starship's interiors attain similar heights of extravagance? Or will it be like Han Solo's iconic Millennium Falcon, a practical assortment of chambers assembled in a somewhat haphazard patchwork of tubes and cabins, ideal for a space pirate with much to carry? Well, to your disappointment, SpaceX's vision for the Starship differs from these two iconic examples. SpaceX essentially strives for a harmonious blend, creating a space that seamlessly fuses comfort and functionality. The goal is to provide an environment where crew members do not feel as though they are hurtling through the cosmos within an ordinary metal cocoon. Now, if there has to be comfortable, if not luxurious space, another critical consideration for SpaceX is the size of the crew. How many people should accompany us on this interplanetary journey? This decision holds significant importance for several reasons. Firstly, each person on board will consume valuable resources like food and water to survive. So, understanding the true mass of a single crew member is crucial, especially when we have a maximum load capacity of 100 metric tons for Starship. Secondly, the mental health and well-being of the crew will play a pivotal role during these long-duration missions. If there are too many people on board and not enough personal space, tensions could rise and the journey might take a dark turn. Conversely, too few crew members are taken, it could result in isolation and conflicts. Most experts tend to agree that a crew of around 10 individuals is the sweet spot for a Starship mission to Mars. While Elon Musk has entertained the idea of sending 100 people at once, it comes with challenges and potential complications. The current Starship measures a substantial 50 meters in length, with a 9 meter diameter tapering to a point at the nose. Elon Musk's preference for a pointier nose, inspired by the movie The Dictator, adds a touch of humor to the design. But the question is, how will it all come together? First, let's get straight into the details of SpaceX's Starship interior. We know that the lower section of the Starship is dedicated to all rocket-related gears, housing at least six powerful Raptor engines, which might be upgraded to nine for the first crewed Mars flight. Among these are three sea-level engines, which will handle the landing burn, while six vacuum engines will propel Starship from low Earth orbit towards the distant stars. This section also houses massive propellant tanks, the lifeblood of this cosmic journey, and it's all crowned by a structure known as the Common Dome. However, it's the upper section where life on Starship begins to take shape. Here, we estimate around 17 meters of available space, likely divided into six vertical levels. Depending on how the height is distributed across each level, we can expect different ceiling heights. For instance, it would make sense to have higher ceilings in the cargo bay and slightly lower ceilings in the crew section. A comfortable height of around 2.5 meters from floor to ceiling should allow crew members to move around without constantly bumping their heads. Now, let's talk about each level separately. At the top floor, which is level 6, you'll find a more compact space due to the tapering design of the current Starship model. And if you've forgotten, Elon Musk ordered this section to be tapered because he liked the design shown in the Dictator movie. Upon asking, Elon humorously said that there's literally no other reason for the tapered end. However, to utilize the nose of the spacecraft, it houses the methane header tank, potentially limiting headroom on this level. Here, crew members would strap into their seats for launch and landing. While Starship is designed for autonomous flight, there would likely be some flight controls and monitoring stations for added stability. Level 5 is an ideal spot for a common area for socializing. Here, as the nose of the spacecraft begins to taper, there's still enough room for a shared space where crew members can gather. On Level 4, we find the crew quarters. While not luxurious by any means, the sheer volume of the Starship allows for reasonably sized compartments for everyone on board. 
Moving down to level three, it's all about fitness and personal hygiene. Physical fitness is critical for extended space missions. Astronauts aboard the International Space Station, or ISS, spend hours each day exercising to maintain cardiovascular health, muscle mass, and bone density. The gym here could feature a stationary bicycle, a treadmill, and maybe even a resistance machine. However, there won't be a conventional shower post-workout. Water, a precious resource in space, doesn't flow in zero gravity. So, astronauts will use wet towels and dry shampoo to freshen up. On the second level, we envision this space as a storage area for food and essential supplies. It could even host a hydroponic garden for growing small amounts of fresh vegetables, adding a touch of green to the metallic surroundings. At the bottom, the first floor would likely be dedicated to the cargo bay. Once Starship reaches Mars, it's essential to have resources and infrastructure ready for the crew's survival. This includes rovers, robots, and other vital equipment. The lowest level is also home to the ship's life support systems, the power generator, and the ground elevator. Given Starship's impressive height, a lift system is essential for convenient access in and out. Now, let's talk about getting around inside the Starship. To facilitate movement in zero gravity, each level would be connected by a central column, a tube that allows easy travel between floors. This column would also house essential infrastructure, like plumbing and wiring. Beyond its functional role, it would serve as a crucial structural element of the spacecraft's core. One of the significant challenges for Starship's crew is staying connected with Earth. While astronauts aboard the ISS are physically isolated in low Earth orbit, they enjoy real-time internet connectivity and can communicate seamlessly with Earth. However, as the crew of the Starship gets deeper into interplanetary space, the challenge becomes more difficult than expected. Basically, the sheer distance introduces significant communication delays. At the halfway point of their journey, it could take approximately 10 minutes for a message to reach either Earth or Mars, and another 10 minutes for a response to return. This communication lag is a unique aspect of deep space travel, where staying in touch with the rest of humanity becomes a considerable challenge. It's a reminder that interplanetary missions, despite the incredible advancements in technology and spacecraft design, still come with their own set of hurdles to overcome. As we explore the final frontier, it's not just about reaching distant destinations, but also about bridging the gaps between our worlds, both figuratively and literally. Now, let's talk about the other and more real major challenge of the Starship Miracle, the way to power the ship and maintain life support. This challenge hinges on a significant demand for electricity, and there's no simple solution in sight. Solar energy seems like a natural choice, given its successful application on the International Space Station, ISS. But there's a catch, the sheer size of the required solar arrays. Imagine the eight primary solar wings on the ISS, each stretching 112 feet long by 39 feet wide. Transposing these dimensions onto Starship is impractical. They can't be folded out post-launch. So, an alternative approach could involve constructing a solar panel module in space and attaching it to the ship after refueling in orbit. However, as you move further from the sun, solar panels become less effective, necessitating even larger arrays. Additionally, landing on Mars with these massive panels would be impractical. The other option is batteries, like Tesla's Powerwall, which is known for powering homes. A fleet of Powerwalls, each capable of holding 13 kilowatt hours of energy and powering an average house for a day, combined with a more manageable solar array, could provide sufficient energy for a six-month journey. Recharging Powerwalls on Mars using ground-based solar arrays would prepare them for the return trip. However, batteries are heavy. Each Powerwall unit weighs about 250 pounds, potentially limiting cargo capacity. Hydrogen fuel cells offer a promising solution. They efficiently convert hydrogen gas into electricity while producing water as a byproduct, a two-in-one solution. This option could be useful. However, the idea is still in consideration. Will Starship prove to end the distance between fictional and real interstellar life? Let us know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to be the first to know about what's happening in space. Till the next video, stay safe!